I want to do another calm and relaxed talk, because I might actually make this a series, I guess. More or less just about box sets, or collections of films, or series of films. Uh, the first one being uh, a calm and relaxed talk about the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, so let's have a calm and relaxed talk about the Alien franchise. Of course, you know what it is. I don't know why people have this impression when they're making a video, I have it a lot too, where it's like, I'm going to surprise the audience with something, like the title of the video. Um, so yeah, this is the Alien Anthology, which includes Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, and Alien Resurrection, uh, in a really crappy case. Uh, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's really just really bad at the same time. Um... But it also comes with the uh, special edition cuts of all of these films. Um, and I will be honest, I like all of them. I mean, look, I like all the Alien films. I always have uh, to varying amounts. I think I actually watched them and reviewed them this year on the letterbox. So I might actually jump and look for those. Um, but of course, I guess we'll talk about them in order of release. Uh, so let's talk about Alien, the Ridley Scott film from 1979. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, in this case, I have seen both the theatrical cut and the director's cut. Um, I evidently prefer the uh, regular director, uh, the regular theatrical cut. I think it's a perfect film. The director's cut is perfectly fine. There's some added stuff that I don't think needs to be added. But realistically, it, that's all that is. It's just added stuff. Um, and it's fine. Um, I have watched it. As of this year, I watched it. Uh, and what did I say? I gave it five stars. A whopping five stars. Because it is a perfect film. So my quote, let's get the hell out of here. And my review was, I'll always hate what happened to you, Lambert. Oh yeah, and this is the best film of all time. A perfect film, if you will. Uh, yes, I argue it's a perfect film. There's nothing I can say that will not define it as a perfect film. Um, plot synopsis, I guess, if you don't know what it is. Uh, but crew of the Nostromo, a delivery crew, get woken up by a beacon. They go search the planet, and then stuff gets haywire. Ho ho, stuff, aliens, what? Ed, ho. It's really hard to, it's, I mean, look, you can't really spoil a film that most people have watched in the past 50 years since it's been out. Uh, 50 or 40 years. I think it's 40 years now. But yeah, honestly, perfect film. Um, would highly recommend it. I don't really want to be like, oh, spoiler alert, because, like, you know, still. I'm going to assume you've probably watched all these films, even though I probably won't detail specific plot points. Um, yeah, look, there's not really much I can say about the film. Uh, you can watch either version. I'd recommend the theatrical cut over the... Director's cut, but they're both perfectly fine. Uh, so let's just jump into Aliens. Um, Aliens, I have... Wow, I've actually watched it. Oh, yeah, I watched it twice this year. I watched the... Um, I did a binge of all the Alien films earlier this year. Uh, but I watched all the special editions, except for the first Alien film. I just watched the regular uh, the regular cut. Uh, but all the rest of them, I watched the special edition. Um, so I've watched the theatrical and special edition of Aliens this year, because we watched it in class. Yeah, so for my, uh, extended edition review, I, my quote was, uh, she doesn't have, uh, bad dreams because she's just a piece of plastic. Um, and my review is, I wish these films never gave me nightmares. I gave the film five stars. I really like it. I mean, I don't think it's as perfect as Alien. Arguably, I'd probably say it's a four and a half star film, but depends which version. I mean, I've always enjoyed Aliens. Uh, I enjoy the special edition probably a bit more, even though the theatrical cut is a lot tighter. I don't know, I enjoy the mother-daughter dynamic that's present in the special edition cut. However, the, you know, there's extra stuff like the Sentinels fighting against the aliens, which isn't really necessary, and the opening scenes on the planet where all the people are isn't really necessary because it cuts out the mystery of, oh, is it actually aliens? You know, of course, it is, and that's probably why they left it in there, but still. And then I rewatched uh, the theatrical cut later, later on. Uh, my quote for that was just, not bad for a human. Slim, sliced, and wild dice. That's how I like my xenomorph salad. That was my review. Again, still five stars. I mean, how could I not? Do you want me to go into plot details? Not really. Okay, synopsis. Um, 
What does it say? After drifting through space in hypersleep for 57 years, the only survivor from the first alien encounter accompanies a team of colonial marines uh, back to LV-426. This time it's war. Um, it doesn't actually even say who this lone survivor is. Who could it be? Spooky. Alien Free. What can I say about this film? Look, I watched the special edition cut this year. I've seen both versions. I don't... I've never really been a fan of uh, the theatrical cut. Um, I never minded it, but I never really... It confused me. I didn't understand it. I watched it as a kid, so I didn't really get it. Uh, I didn't get the thematics. I didn't understand it. Uh, I thought the alien was scary, and it was a clever idea to have it come from an from a, a animal instead. Um, but, yeah, it just didn't really seem necessary. But then my review, what did I give it? I gave it four and a half stars. What? I actually viewed the assembly cut, or the special edition, uh, which is difference in runtime. So the first film, Alien, the theatrical cut is 116 minutes. The director's cut is 116 minutes. It's literally like 30 seconds of extra footage. It's enough to count it to just be both 116 minutes. Aliens, the James Cameron film, uh, theatrical cut is 137 minutes, whereas the special edition is 157 minutes. It's a lot longer film. Then you've got Alien Free, directed by David Fincher, which is the theatrical cut is 115 minutes, and the special edition is 145. So they've added a whole extra half an hour to it. In this case, it says Ripley uh, crash lands on Fiorina 161, a bleak wasteland inhabited by former inmates of a maximum security prison. But an alien was aboard her craft, and the body count begins to mount. Not a great way to def- to explain it, but sure, that's that's what it says. Uh, my review. I didn't actually. Oh, I do have a quote. I usually start with a quote. I've just written this one weirdly. So viewed alien free assembly cut. Notes superior to previous version. Good way to end the trilogy. Minor dated effects on Xenomorph. Overall, a welcome addition to the franchise. Uh, the dated effects are more or less the uh, stop motion effects that they use on the alien, which is interesting. My quote Do you want it on your feet or on your fucking knees? Uh, and then I said end transmission. Get it? Because it's, yeah. Yeah, I'd argue it's a trilogy, really. Uh, I mean, when you look at it, if you're looking, following from Ripley's perspective, yeah, it's a trilogy. But of course, they still made a fourth one. Can't make that fourth one without a third one. So yeah, let's talk about Alien Resurrection. Uh, directed by Jean-Pierre Genet. Genet? I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's been 200 years since Ripley made uh, The Ultimate Sacrifice. Uh, but now a group of scientists has cloned her, along with the alien queen inside her, hoping to breed the ultimate weapon. Yeah, this is what I've always, and my friends have always defined as, like, the popcorn version of Alien. You know, what if it was just a big monster fest, with nothing really special to say or do, and just, oh, it exists. It's very mixed rated, because of it. Um, and I'd still, I'd still argue Alien 3 is a better film. The theatrical cut goes for 109 minutes, whereas the special edition goes for 116 minutes. I've seen both versions. I can't exactly say what the difference is, because they're very minute differences, whereas the, uh, Alien 3 special edition, the assembly cut is a lot better, and as you can tell the difference, like, there are literal obvious differences shown on screen. Whereas Resurrection just seems a bit better when you watch the special edition cut. Uh, I think it has an opening thing that actually has the director even saying, like, this is my preferred cut of the film, or they wanted me to make a special edition, so this is the special edition I made. I can't remember which one it was. I know James Cameron's um, Aliens has the special edition says this is the version that the director wanted to make. Uh, This is what he made. This is what he wanted to show, but they cut it down for time, obviously, because they wanted to get more money out of it. So I gave Alien Resurrection... A three and a half stars. My quote was, want to check the chair? It's a good line. And my review, which actually got a like. Oh, thanks for liking my review. Um, Winona Ryder drinking with uh, boxing gloves on was unexpected and much appreciated. Uh, So after viewing the special edition, I can actually say that I enjoyed this film for once. Uh, Far from perfect, but it has decent special effects, mostly being some uh, amazing practical effects with good action and decent comedy too. 
not a necessary film, especially for the franchise, but worth uh, the watch, either to laugh at or be frightened by. And I still stick by that. It's it's not a bad film, and it definitely still exists. And there's not really much else I can say about it. It's just it's just there. It's fine. It's just kind of a popcorn film, you know. Um, it adds interesting atmos- uh, elements and stuff to the franchise, but again, it's still just kind of just there. And that's the Alien Quadrilogy, and we're not going to talk about the... Oh, wait, what, um, what's, what's this? Um, oh, yeah, Prometheus! Do you remember that one? That was a film? Um, it's actually the 3D Blu-ray. Oh, 3D Blu-ray, what? This is because this is the only way we could get, like, the whole collection. <sighs> it's a nice case, too, like this. It's a pretty cool cover. Kind of. The dude's face. What is the actual cover? It's the same. Um, Prometheus is a, what, 2012 film? Uh, yeah, directed by <laughs> Ridley Scott. It is, is it actually written by Damon Lindelof? Wow. And John Spates. It's interesting. I remember going to see this in theaters and being like, is it another alien film? This is back when I was still horrified by the alien films. I don't want to watch another alien film. It's another alien film. And I kept hearing, oh, it's not an alien film. R- Director Ridley Scott says it's not an alien film. So I'm like, okay, cool. Then I found that five minutes before I saw the film. It's an alien film. It's a prequel. So I was scared shitless the whole time that I was watching it. And I hardly watched it. And I've watched it a few times. And I finally, uh, you know, have been able to leave my eyes open the whole entire time. I haven't actually watched it this year, so I have no real review for it. I'd probably maybe argue it's a three and a half, the four star film. It's good. I like it. You know, I've always, I, I, you know, I grew into liking it a lot more. I like the discussion of the philosophies and stuff. There are obviously elements to the film that aren't perfect. The whole post credits kind of teaser with the that alien thingy, the deacon as they've called it. Oh my god, that stuff gives me a headache. You know, I don't really consider these as prequels, just kind of their own spin-off set in the previous timeline kind of stuff, because it doesn't make any sense. Like, the technology is all different, and it just doesn't... I don't really care about the origin of the Xenomorph, but I watch these films because I like them. Prometheus is no real way to define it outside of a bunch of scientists go to a planet that they think has ties to the origins of the human race, and whoop de doo look, the big white albino creatures, uh, albino creatures have created, uh, you know, humanity, and they're also created the ultimate weapon to kill humanity. Wow. It's alright, I don't mind it. It's a worthy watch, I feel like. Um, I don't like how the whole back of it is like, how far would you go to get answers? It includes alternate beginning and ending. Look, your questions will be answered in seven hours of special features. It's well acted, good special effects, mostly digital. Um, I don't mind the film. It could have been better. Uh, I wasn't exactly, I don't know what exactly I was looking for uh, for because there was nothing that um, I was expecting out of it, outside of it having potentially aliens and stuff and conveniently doesn't have any of the eggs, which is really good. I like that. But then there's its sequel, Alien Covenant, which I actually have the steel case of. Look at that beauty. And I've never taken off the actual... Actually, I have, haven't I? Maybe? I don't like steel cases uh, that much. I mean, I do, but I don't like this cardboard element to it. Uh, collectible steel case plus 100 minutes of immersive extras. Oh, oh. I mean, the intro, the opening uh, is not bad. It's a good, like, mural of Xenomorphs. It doesn't really make any sense at the same time, because once you've watched the film, you're like... What the fuck is this? Um, and I hated this once I first watched it. You know, it was obviously trying to be like Prometheus meets Alien and trying to have the same kind of feel and elements to it, and it just doesn't pull it off. But, and obviously they put it in the Alien title, and they're like, look, it's a Neomorph, and it's a Protomorph, or whatever the hell, you know, it's like a prototype Xenomorph, you know? I don't, I don't mind it. I do like this film. I'd probably still give it three and a half to four stars. Um, 
Because if you look at it strictly as a mad scientist film, a bunch of other scientists and explorers uh, go to a planet to try and colonize it. Um, of course, they've gone to a different planet to the one that was initially wanted that they wanted to go to. And a mad scientist who has created all these different kinds of monsters and creatures um, happens to be residing there. And happens to be Michael Bas- Fassbender's David from the previous film. So yeah, it's not the perfect sequel to Prometheus that people are wanting, uh, but I'm very, I'm very hopeful that they keep making these films. But given that 20th Century Fox has now been accumulated by our overlord Disney, I very much doubt it. Um, but yeah, I'd look, I'd suggest that you can really only watch it if you've watched Prometheus. Otherwise, you don't really have the context or the emotional context behind David and his struggle. Because this film is about, this duology so far, it's, it's, it's about David. It's not about anyone else. It's about David. The xenomorphs, the, the aliens are background things. The engineers are background things. Uh, it's all about an android learning about humanity and learning to be human, if that's even possible. So, yeah, it's not a bad film. And overly overall, it's not a bad franchise, uh, you know. Um, would I recommend these films? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd recommend the Alien... I, I, honestly, I'd recommend all of them. Probably faltering more and more as the franchise goes on. But Alien is perfect. Aliens is near perfect. Alien 3, the special edition cut, really top. Um, Alien Resurrection is alright. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, it's arguably better than Prometheus. Um, but arguably worse than Prometheus, depends on what aspects you're looking at. Prometheus isn't a bad film. It's not terrific, but it's not bad. Alien Covenant, I think, is better than Prometheus. Because it's not about answering all these questions. It's about mad scientists killing all these people. And it's great. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, and that's my talk about uh, the Alien franchise. Like, there's not much more I could put into discussion about it. Uh, I wouldn't start with Prometheus and then go to, you know, Covenant and then Alien because that also doesn't make any sense. You really have to start from theatrical release dates, and yeah, that's pretty much all I can really say about it. Um, it's a worthwhile franchise, and I still adore it. And I still love it, uh, and I would highly recommend it. So yeah, feel free to check out the Alien films that you probably have. That's a given. Uh, at least if you haven't, definitely go check them out. Um, yeah. If not, just watch the first Alien. It's a perfect film. Aliens is a good sequel. Terrific sequel, in fact. Alien 3 is a good way to end it. It's not exactly what you may want or may expect, but it's something, it's different, it's new, it's original, I like it. Cool. All right, well, thanks for watching another episode of... Another episode? Another video on this channel. Uh, if you want to see my previous, uh, I come and relax, talk about, uh, I did the Fast and Furious, that should be up here, as well as maybe video essay playlists, or even something else, I don't know, either way, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, adios, uh, if, I guess if you want me to review any kind of box sets or series of films, um, then yeah, feel free to recommend those in the comments, and I'll see you next time.